Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm, and I thought I'd start out this gardening season by offering an introduction to plant propagation for those who are new to this part of the hobby. There's a reason I'm doing this. I just came off of a couple of videos where I tackled fake propagation videos, and this is not a debunking video itself, uh, but it occurred to me as I was looking at all these fake propagation videos, two conclusions came to mind. Number one, there really is an appetite amongst new gardeners for learning those propagation techniques. The second thing is that the fake videos wouldn't pass at all if people had just the fundamentals, just the basic understanding of what's possible, what's not possible with plant propagation. So I'm going to tackle that today and I should be able to give you a really good overview within about five to ten minutes. Plant propagation is any method where you get more plants from the same ones you already had, but you can break it up into a couple of different major categories being sexual and asexual propagation. Sexual propagation is by seed, and you're familiar with this where you have a male flower and a female flower, the pollen moves over from the male to the female, it develops a fruit, some ripe seeds eventually, and then those seeds become seedlings, and each of those seedlings is genetically distinct from the parent plant. So that's sexual propagation. Asexual propagation is where you clone the plant and almost all of my plants here all of these roses for sure are done by asexual propagation they're clones of their parent plants so i get to keep the genetic characteristics of the parent plants in that case Let's take a second to talk about stem cells and where they live in the plant. And you might be familiar with this term stem cell, maybe even more so in animal biology as those early embryonic cells that are undifferentiated, but then are used up in making all the different tissues of the animal as it develops. And they might turn into the heart tissue or the lung tissue uh, as they grow. Well, it's the same thing in plants. Those stem cells are used to make up the leaves or the flowers or the stems. The difference between an animal and a plant, of course, is that once an animal is fully developed, you don't hold on to a bunch of those stem cells, which is why they can't clone animals very easily uh, by these same processes. But plants, they hold on to stem cells in something called the meristematic tissue. And they keep that around because they continue to develop and grow into new places and need those for the development of the roots downwards or new stems upwards or flowers later on in their cycles. So they hold on to them in a couple of specific places in the plant. Again, those root tips are one of them. And the other place that they hold on to them in large numbers is around the buds on the plant. I tell you all this stuff about stem cells by way of explaining why it is that the majority of all of the asexual propagation is done by stem cuttings, and it just happens to be the place on the plant that has the most of those tissues, particularly at those spots we call the nodes, where there's dormant buds that have those meristematic tissues. And what you would do is you'd cut the bottom of the stem just below one of those nodes, and you'd cut the top of the stem just above one of those nodes, and then what will happen is if you place them in the right condition, the plant will know to take that meristematic tissue that's in those nodes and start turning it into roots on the bottom and shoots on the top, so that you end up with something like this here, which is just a stem that's being cut off of a plant that it starts to root on the bottom and sending new shoots on the top. Now, all of the other propagation methods, the asexual propagation methods, center around how it is that you're going to get access to those differentiating tissues. In fact, if you've heard of tissue culture, that's exactly what the lab technicians do in a tissue culture lab, is they dissect a plant in a spot that's particularly rich in those stem cells. It's called the apical meristem. It's right at the growing tip of the plant. They usually get rid of the excess tissue around it, pull out that group of undifferentiated cells, put it into a flask or a petri dish, and then grow it on and divide it until it's a big mass of undifferentiated cells, at which point they can divide it into other petri dishes and then start giving it the signals that will tell it to turn that tissue into stems and roots and shoots for the new plants. So I've given you an overview of seeding, stem cuttings, and tissue culture. Between those three and this fourth one I want to talk to you about right now, probably high 90s percent of all the commercial propagation is done by one of these four methods. And the fourth one I wanna to talk to you about is called division. Now, when you look at a bulb of garlic like this one here, you can see it's broken up into all these little cloves. So the plant has already done some of the work of replicating itself, breaking itself into these distinct plantlets that can, you can take and break apart and then plant in different places. So that's division at its simplest form. And you can see that a lot of bulbs are done that way. Also a lot of bare root perennials are done that way. And you look at something like this, it's a very full pot full of a rudbeckia. And the plant of course has done the thing already of breaking itself into all these little different heads in the crown. 
And you can see that this pot is chock full of roots here, but at the top, there are all these individual little crowns that the plant has already divided out. And all I really have to do to get a viable plant is cut off a section that has a section of roots on the bottom like this, and then a new crown or shoot at the top. And as long as it has roots and shoots, you've got a new plant. The remaining methods on my chart as an overview are really minor methods. They're not things that are used widespread, but can be interesting and fun nonetheless. So let's talk about leaf propagation. I mentioned most of the time, those bundles of meristematic tissue are most present in the stems of plants, but sometimes there's sufficient uh, undifferentiated tissue in the foliage for it to make it worthwhile trying. So for something like a begonia, that can be that can yield good results. African violets are another one. Oftentimes you'll find sedum or uh, echeveria, lots of succulents like that, where the leaf kind of doubles as the stem. So if you take the base of the leaf and put it in soil, uh, or even just leave it in air, it may actually send out little roots on its own. Another example would be something like this, which is a Christmas cactus. And you can see on this, that the leaves also double as the stem. So if you were actually able to trim off one of these leaves and stick it into soil, the base of that leaf would act as a stem and start to root. And I'll show you that in a different video. Root cuttings is another one that's just, I would call a minor method. It's even a smaller list, as far as I can recall, of plants that you can do by root cuttings. Things like lilac, I think, oriental poppy. I also did a cranby by root cuttings. Uh, but again, they don't have leaves, and so that makes it so they have no energy except what's stored in that root. And it just doesn't work for a lot of different plants. Layering and air layering are actually just modifications of the stem cutting technique where you don't cut off the stem, but try to convince it to root in place. So layering is when you would take the branch of a plant and pull it down and pin it underneath some soil. Maybe you'd make a cut in there, put on some rooting hormone, and then see if you can get it to root in place while it's still attached to the plant. Air layering is basically the same method, except you put it into a pod or an enclosure or a bag and you do that above the ground. But basically they are both just stem cutting techniques without cutting the stem. And finally, I put onto the list here as grafting. And grafting, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm not sure it's exactly a propagation technique because you've got to assume that the root stock that you're grafting onto has already been propagated by another technique, either by seed or by cuttings. And really what it is, is a method by which you would conjoin two plants. So you'd have that root stock and then you'd graft on the top stock with some tape or some other way of, of keeping them together while they heal together that only works for plants that are closely related so you'll end up with a rose where the top stalk is one variety and the root stalk is another variety this is commonly used on fruit trees as well but I would call it a a specialty production method but not necessarily a propagation method if you know if you can see the distinction I'm making there well I figure that should do it for an introductory or overview or conceptual level of these propagation techniques, uh, given that each one of them is their own specific techniques and you'd have to learn how to do each of them individually. I've got videos for that. I've got lots of videos on rose propagation by cuttings, lavender, rosemary, uh, all sorts of things. I've got seeding videos. So what I'll do is I will link at the back end of this video um, in the end screen, I'll give you a couple of my propagation videos so you can look at other things on the topic and get going on that. But I just wanted to give you an introduction to the concepts, start the conversation and certainly if you have questions uh, please feel free to drop those into the comments below the video i'll see what i can do to help